Welcome back to another episode of Addicted to Gear, everyone. Today we're looking at part two of my review of the Mighty Air from Nuex. This wireless Bluetooth speaker is quite impressive for anyone who wants to have the ability to play music pretty much wherever you may be, whenever the urge strikes you to play. This unit will allow you to do that. Now, in part one of my review, we spoke about what the unit sounds like uh, through the actual speakers. We looked at the features and functions that it offers in terms of a standalone unit. But there's another aspect of this device that we need to talk about, and that is the software editor that comes with it. Now, the software that comes with it is free. You can download it online through the Apple Store or Android Store. Uh, and basically, you can load it up and play it on pretty much any device. Now I'm playing it through my iPad, but you can also play this through your phone or any device that allows you to connect via wireless Bluetooth. Now the really cool thing about the unit as a whole is the fact that the software is pretty powerful. Now the unit seems pretty simple and intuitive, which is fantastic, but the software allows you to go much deeper into the editing capabilities and allows you to really tweak the sounds that you can get from the unit far beyond the controls that are included on the top of the unit here. Now you have four sounds that are programmable and each one of those programmable patches can be edited through the editor and the editor allows you to go way beyond the typical controls that you see on the top of the unit here. So you can take a deep dive into the editing of each one of those sounds, tweak them to your heart's content, and then save them, and you can recall them through the buttons on the top of the unit in a split second. So that's pretty cool. So let's jump right into the editor and see what you have in terms of tools to edit and tweak your sounds. We'll go through a few patches, We'll go through a few effects and I'll show you some sound samples of what kind of sounds you can get out of the Mighty Air with the software editor. All right, so we're going to go over the Mighty Air software that you can run off of your iPad or iPhone or whatever device you might have handy. We're going to start off by making sure everything is connected to the uh, unit. So as you can see, the first thing you need to do is actually put the power on and make sure it's connected to the actual transmitter that's on your guitar. Um, once the unit is on and the transmitter is connected, you can scan to connect to your actual device. And as you can see, it's now connected. So that's great. At the bottom here, we can go to the ed editor and you can see that in the editor, we now have the ability to work with either a guitar or a bass. In this case, we're going to use a guitar. We have clean overdrive distorted uh, acoustic guitar simulator and the save button here at the top. Under that we have, this is the actual effects that are available for each one of the simulations. This is basically all of the effects in your signal chain. Then below that, we can see that we have an amp selected. In this case, it's a Jazz Chorus 120. And if we just scroll down the page a little bit, you'll see these are all the settings that I have currently on the amp. So let's turn up the volume on the guitar, strum a couple of chords to hear what it sounds like. As you can see, Sounds very chorusy. Definitely sounds nice. Looks um, and sounds a lot like what you would expect to hear from a Jazz Chorus 120. Of course, here we can obviously change the gain structure. Although the Jazz 20 doesn't typically have much gain, if we maximize that, you'll see. It just becomes a little louder. But it still stays pretty clean. Uh, obviously we have bass, middle, treble and tone here. And then if we wanted to actually add some additional effects, we can look here and select 
either a noise gate. In this case, a jazz chorus is pretty clean. The noise gate is currently off. If you want to turn it on, you would just click that and you see now that the gate is engaged. The noise gate has a couple of options here. So if you uh, look at that, you have threshold and sustain both as 50%, but in this case, it wouldn't really be necessary because the sound is clean overall anyway. So I'll turn that off. And uh, the next one over, we have a couple of different options here for effects and I'll scroll down the list. As you can see, we have Univibe, Tremolo, Phaser, Boost, TS Drive, which I guess is a Tube Screamer, 3-band EQ, a Muff, Church, Red Distortion, Morning Drive, and Distortion 1. Um, so for example, if I wanted to use the Univibe, I would take that and turn it on. Let's hear what that sounds like. <laughs> definitely gives you that nice swirly effect. Obviously you can play with the, the rate and the depth. So if we want to make the rate a little bit slower, as you can see, that's a lot slower. Pretty nice sound. Let's move on to something else. Let's uh, give it a, um, how about we go with a um, TS drive, see what that sounds like. Now, I don't think the TS drive uh, and the Tube Screamer make a very good match, but I just wanted to show you what that gives in terms of uh, sounds. Uh, if we go with a phaser, for example, let's see what that sounds like. Pretty nice sounding. Uh, let's give the bring the rate down. I have to admit the um, modulation effects are quite nice on uh, the uh, jazz chorus setting. I like it a lot. Uh, well, I'm just gonna briefly show you what the IRs are. So the IRs, basically, if you wanna load your own impulse responses, you have a bunch here and they're different cabinet simulations from uh, the jazz chorus to the V69, uh, the DR112 and the V412. In this case, for the jazz chorus, we obviously selected the jazz chorus, but you can change that if you change it over to some other type of cabinet simulation. <laughs> The sound changes along with it, obviously, but it's good. It's a good idea to match it up with the type of amp that you're currently using to keep it authentic. All right, then next we have modulation effects. The modulation effects speak for themselves. Obviously, here we have phaser, chorus, flanger, and vibe. Uh, let's listen to, just for the heck of it, a flanger sound here. <laughs> So you can hear that, it works really nice, and maybe for the heck of it, we'll put in a tremolo. So if we want to, let's hear how fast or how slow we can put the actual rate here, put it to 100. And if we pull down the depth, bring it back up. Yeah, we can get it to sound quite choppy there. It's kind of nice effect. Um, so we'll turn off the modulation for now. Next, we'll go into delay. For the delay settings, we have uh, analog, tape, digital, and ping pong. So let's play with the ping pong delay here. Turn that on. And uh, 
pretty cool. I like that a lot. And here, one thing about the delays that I should tell you or mention is that you also have the ability to adjust the time just by clicking on the delay. So if I tap slower, pretty cool. And that applies for all of the delays. The uh, I like the tape uh, delay or the analog delay because the repeats kind of get uh, progressively worse as uh, you it goes on. So as you can see, it's not as pristine. And as the delays repeat, they actually get worse and worse. That's the hallmarks uh, sound of an analog delay, which is pretty cool uh, and I like a lot. So let's move on to the reverbs. Uh, the reverbs here we have a selection of the standard type of reverbs between room hall, plate, spring, and shimmer. I like plate a lot. I usually use plate most of the time. However, if you want to get a, a nice um, shimmery kind of uh, futuristic type of sound, shimmer works really nice for that. <laughs> Higher up in the mix. So you can get some nice ethereal sounding reverbs out of it. Uh, let's see what the spring sounds like. Uh, let's remove the delay so we can actually hear the effect without the delay on. So you can hear the spring. I usually like leaving it on plate because plate to me. Has more of a swirly effect to it, um, which is, is nice to have as well. Uh, so let's look at some of the other settings. So that's the clean. Just going back to the clean sound here for a minute. If we go back to the amp, we also have a couple of other amps here. We have a twin verb. Oh, the level's quite hot here. So you have the gain up there quite a bit. Let's turn off, let's put the verb back to um, room for a second. And we're going to go back to the amps and try out the uh, Tweed Deluxe. Okay, so you get an idea of what that offers. Now let's go back and go to the overdrive settings here. And now here we're going to be dealing with a plexi type amp. If I want to save the settings, like if I like these settings the way they are right now, all I need to do is hit the save button right over here and it's going to get saved to my device so that I don't have to worry about it in the future. It's going to be uh, there. <laughs> So now this uh, effect is using the gate, 
The amp is the Plexi. It's the IRs on this one are using the Greenback 412 cab. That's the one I want. Um, and the delay is on. I'm using an analog delay and the reverb is on spring. I'm actually going to change that to plate. <laughs> So if I like that sound, I just click save and it should save it directly to my device, which is cool, right? So now for the dirty sounds, the overdrive sounds, that was the Plexi. Uh, we also have a Top Boost 30, which is, uh, I'm assuming is a, um, a Vox and a Lead 100. So just to hear the difference, uh, let's make sure the levels are not too hot. <laughs> So that's definitely a fatter sound. And if we go to the top boost, make sure the level's not too hot, much thinner. We can hear that. This one's sounding a bit squished and I think it's probably because of the noise gate. So let's turn that off. No, it's actually not because of the noise gate. It's because of the sound itself. Uh, let's go into the IRs. Uh, let's see what we have there. We have, so maybe we can try a different type of cabinet on that. Let's do the 112, see what that sounds like. Not really fond of that sound. Sounds a little thin to me. So let's move on to the distorted channel. In this case, now we have the the uh, what they call the fireman. Basically, I guess a copy of a Friedman type sound. Very nice sound. All right, then we also have the recto and... And we can go to the recto verb, which is... Interesting sounds, not bad considering I'm playing on a Strat. Uh, let's go to the acoustic simulators now. The acoustic simulations are basically going to give you that acoustic type sound. They are going to try to give you that acoustic si sound uh, uh, anyway. I'm going to play it on the middle pickup. So for that acoustic sound, we have a stage man and an optima. The optima is more like an ovation, I think. Oh, the level's way too hot on that one. And if we look at the settings here, the bass, middle, and treble are pretty much even. So in this case, maybe I'd want to have a little bit of a different reverb here. We have a room, which is nice, but maybe we can go to a plate. And maybe we can use a little ping pong uh, delay. Let's try that. Let's go with uh, ping pong and maybe give it a little bit of a, just dial it back. Oh, let's turn it on. All right. 
right, so let's give, uh, let's go back to the acoustic simulations and let's go back to the Optima here. See if we can play with this one a little bit. So if you want to really get a nice... You would probably want to use an effect as well on this one. Maybe if we go to see the IR in this one is the MD45 EG magnetic, but we have different uh, settings here. So if you go to something like that, it sounds very different than this one. So depending on the type of guitar you're using and what kind of pickups you have. You can definitely select the sound that matches your guitar. See this one definitely has more of that acoustic guitar, piazzo type pickup sound. And let's go to the um, oh, the 45 here. Oh, very bright. So you see you have quite a bit of variation there when it comes to the acoustic simulations as well. And playing around with the reverbs, the modulations, and also maybe putting an EQ in front of this would be able to give you a really nice sound overall. Uh, but you know what, it, it's a really nice tool to have. Like if you're going to be practicing at home and you don't want to disturb anybody, put on a pair of headphones, dial in the tone that you're looking for with the amount of gain you want uh, and you're pretty much in business. And since I'm playing an, a, a Strat style guitar, you can see that you can still get some nice driven sounds even though I'm using single coils with the simulations. So that's pretty cool to have as well. Uh, other than that, you can also uh, go into the drum section here where you can use the unit as a metronome. We won't talk too much about that. It's pretty basic. You can just basically turn up and uh, put in a beat so that you can play along with it when you're practicing. Here also you can tap to be able to set your beats per minute. Uh, very basic stuff, but you can also select different type of beats. You know, from swing to blues to rock. Uh, so depending on what you want to play with, it makes it a little bit more pleasant to use than a really straightforward basic metronome. All right, and then, well, that's enough of that. And then we can go to the jam track section and here you can basically load up the default uh, jam tracks that you can play with. They have Thrill Disappear and uh, you can also load your own stuff. So here if you want to play along with something. The funny thing is when you're using the jam tracks, you don't hear it through your headphones, you hear it through the speaker of the, uh, the iPad for some reason. A little bit strange that it does that, uh, but you know, if you play along with it, you hear your guitar through your headphones. So I'm not sure why it does that, but that's the way it's set up. And then you could load your own music as well to be able to play along with that. So it's a pretty nice, nifty uh, unit to play with. 
when you're playing the jam tracks, you can also have access to the editor so you can change the sounds as you wish while you're playing and go between your clean sounds and distorted sounds. So I can't speak for you guys, but I'm pretty impressed with the sounds and capabilities that you're able to tweak using the onboard software editor within the Mighty Air. In my opinion, the Mighty Air is a great standalone unit, but it shines even more when you're going directly through the unit and playing the sounds right into your recording device, your laptop, or whatever you're using to record your sounds. You can take full advantage of the great stereo panning effects that it offers. And in my opinion, the sounds generally sound a lot bigger and nicer than when it's just being uh, played through the actual speaker. So the speaker is great for anyone who wants to practice, who wants to have the ability to play when you're on the road or you're moving around. That is a great option, but I feel that the sounds on the Mighty Air are way better when you're going directly from the unit right into your recording device. And you can actually get some pretty good uh, demo recordings right from the software that's included for free with the unit. So if you're interested in checking out the new X Mighty Air for yourself, I'll put the links down below to where you can get one. You can also visit the new X website and get all of the technical information on the product, as well as download the latest firmware updates because there have been a few since they released the unit. You do definitely want to do that first before you play with the unit so that you have the latest and greatest updates and you can avoid any issues or bugs. So guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Addicted to Gear. If you like the content that we're presenting here, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and hit the little bell icon. If you have any questions or comments regarding the product that we've presented here today, please leave your comments down below. I'll be happy to answer all of your questions. In the meantime, stay tuned, keep rocking, more great stuff coming your way.